So several people have been asking me about this power bike and how I've been getting on with it. It's a bit breezy today but we'll go in the workshop in a moment. I'm just trying to shelter the microphone. Anyway, here we go. We've actually got it working on my own system because it seems like those cheap um, speed controllers from the other side of the world you virtually see they're all rubbish and don't work or maybe the faulty ones are exported but there you go anyway just briefly and it's a bit difficult to see in the viewfinder there are two micro switches there And that con those control two relays which are underneath that panel there and also underneath is part of a 36 volt electric bike battery and I had to put a, a, a new battery management board in there this is all very experimental as you can see and this thing here, you think, what on earth is that old-fashioned round pin socket doing there? Well, it's the main isolator because the plug that you can just see there, the two, two small round pins are wired together. So when I plug that in, it, uh, it makes everything live. And of course, you can pull, pull that out and everything's dead and you could take the plug away with you and nobody in their right mind would think that that is the effectively the on off switch and then as an interesting thing there we've got a voltmeter and so therefore that is one of those two wire 5 to I can't remember 90 volts so that is perfect yeah? and it just tells you what the battery voltage is of course fully charged it is uh, 41 or 42 volts and fully discharged it would be about 26 or 28 volts so it's basically um, a power monitor in the really loosest of terms so I've just latched this together but actually it took quite a lot of thought and quite a lot of messing around but let's just have a look at the speed control method and we're going to have to go on to wobbly cam. So years ago I had a milk float and uh, the speed of that was controlled in this way although the resistances were bigger but just here that's a piece of resistance wire out of an old-fashioned storage heater so in conjunction with the two relays and the micro switches that control those relays, that's it. So we've got a slow speed and a lot faster speed. And the slow speed is, well, there are six or seven speeds on the derailleurs. And when you have the derailleur on number four, then you're just helping the slow speed along a little bit with a bit of minor pedalling and then if you've got a rise or the winds blowing like mad then you'd want to go into high speed so let's just go and have a look at the wiring diagram and the wind has just got in the camera there but let's crack on okay so we've got the front wheel and effectively the motor in the middle and the motor has got two wires and it's DC. Okay, so we have those wires coming up into the frame, positive and negative. And then we've got a battery with a plus and a minus, and that is 36 volt lithium. So, what we want to do first of all is 
because the BMS regulates the negative then all we want to do is attach the positive to the positive okay all right and then we want to switch the negative so we come along the negative and let's see how we're going to do this it's going to be a little bit tricky okay let's draw it up here we've got the negative coming along and we have a relay so that's the contacts and that goes off to the uh, motor negative that's the motor negative and this is the battery negative fine you've got the other one the other relay and these are just simple automotive relays comes from there but instead of going directly to the motor it goes through that coil of wire and then to the motor so that's a resistance and that's it really okay so we have a control on each of these relays let me just get one of these relays and they're just like this and it tells you what the connections are normally on the side but you've got a um, a contact and contact maybe and then a coil and a coil and the coil normally has a resistor across it to reduce the uh, EMF, the back electromotive force. So when a coil is switched off, it actually gives out energy. So the resistor is there to get rid of it. And when you're doing your own circuitry, sometimes you'd put a diode across the wrong way round, so that only when the uh, the coil is switched off can the EMF go through the diode and short its own coil out. Anyway, that's only on DC. So there you go. So then, effectively, we have what I've got is let's draw it over here. We have a um, a positive. So we come from the positive, and what I did was we went through the micro switches on the handlebars and there's two of them so they're wired together the feed is wired to each of them and then out of the two of them let's just draw the other one behind it out of two of them we have two wires and they go to the coils of the relay and of course then the other side of the coil goes back to the negative but that's a 12 volt relay and uh, this is 36 volts so I put a 5 ohm resistor quite a large one in there to resist the flow of current okay so that means that those coils in those relays don't burn out I think that's about it see it's very simple and you can fix it yourself and then of course the voltmeter was straight across the positive and negative let's just draw the voltmeter um, yeah. and that goes straight across the positive and negative and they are the wires are red and black and they're brilliant and they're about three pounds four pounds each but they're so good and if you've got a battery system at home and you're running an inverter then one of those cheap um, digital meters, volt meters is absolutely brilliant to have in the kitchen and it's a two wire one not a three wire one a three wire one you need a power supply to make it work the two wire one will work on the the power or the voltage that is measuring so two wire ones quite good 
just when you're ordering one, just make sure it is a two wire one. I think that is it. Yeah. So the output of these relays goes off to there. So you've got positive, uh, negative coming through and down to there. And of course the positive is straight to the battery. So the, the, that is to the negative there of the motor. Motor negative. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. And it's so, you know, we're not relying on imported technology. But there is one thing, and I did a video about this quite a long time ago. And hopefully I'll put a link to it. There we go. Capacitors. So they have, that's got negative on it. And these are, and I use these quite a lot on our systems, 33 microfarad, 100 volts. And effectively what they do, the negative goes to the negative. And it goes across the contacts of the relay. So each of these relays has got a capacitor across it. And that, what that does is it stops the contacts arcing when you disconnect, when you switch off. So it stops the contacts from burning. Very much similar as in the old fashioned cars which was coil and points. They had a capacitor across the, the points. But of course in those days they called it a condenser. But it was just a capacitor. So I, as I say, 33 microfarads at 100 volts it's fine but you know we're only on 36 volts so it could be as say for instance a 60 volt microfarad and it could be 60 volt capacitor and it could be 50 microfarads or 20 and you just sort of make sure that it suppresses the uh, the spark for the current that you're actually switching So there you go, it works. Some people will say, oh, it's quite inefficient. Well, it's not that bad. And that resistor, the long line of resistance wire, doesn't get that warm. It's just, you know, we're only talking about a 200 watt motor or thereabouts. So um, it doesn't get that warm. It definitely doesn't get warm enough so that you would burn your hand. Yeah, you can hardly feel any heat from it whatsoever and it's underneath there okay it's right next to a bit of wood it's a bit of poplar but it's not a problem yeah, so therefore we've got some losses but then in the switch mode power supply type speed controllers you do have losses as well and you can't fix them as we've proved and you can't rely on them at least this you know, when you're down the scrapyard the next time just um, in amongst the scrap cars before they get crushed just grab a handful of relays and that will do the job um, and of course it's got fuses in it and then that isolator so if you're going to park it up you, know, you can pull that out or, you know, and you know, it's in the shed but it's, it's effectively dead then you haven't got lots of 36 volt live parts just hanging around waiting for a mouse to have a nibble or what have you Let's have some comments and discussion, that would be great, see what you think, and I will catch up with you very soon. Cheers for now.